let's bring this evening's finance committee meeting to order. Um, we will go through the agenda. First item of the, on the agenda is the meeting minutes from the 21st of November. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. We approve the minutes of the November 21st meeting. Second. We have a second. We have a motion. Um, let's take a, because do we have to do? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Brenda? No. Aye. Aye. Andrew? Aye. Jim? Jim? Aye. Paul, yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Paul on the phone? Paul at home? Paul Newland? He knows the way up. He's there Paul. somewhere. And you? Okay. All right. Good enough. We can't get the ball. That's good enough. So we have a vote and minutes are accepted. We'll move to um second item on today's agenda. That's a finance overview. The Whitney Financial Trends by our own town administrator, Mr. Brian Domino. Right. Paul right. is in your court. Hey, Claudia. Is that Paul Newland? Can anybody hear me out there? Yes. Can you hear us? Evidently not. Evidently not. No. What? Shit. <laughs> Hey, Claudia. Yelling for Claudia. That's funny. <laughs> yes, in case. Okay. Paul, Paul, if you can hear this, read this. We hear you. All right. Daddy, how you doing? What? Paul Newman. Paul Newman. On Zoom. Does it tell you who else is on? It would if there was anybody it, else on, but yeah. he's he's in. And this is also broadcast in live. Oh, on TV. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to keep that in mind. So <laughs> you can get fined by the FCC if they say something bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lose our jobs. Ooh. Maybe. Maybe. It goes no, you have extra term. Pay. Yeah, yes. you get an extra term. All right. Okay. So this is the typical overview that most everybody has seen and is updated for um, for this year moving forward. But I think it's a good refresher. Yep. Um. So categories are so revenue and expenses, right? Categories of revenue, tax levy, state aid, local receipts. Um, we have our reserves. Uh, we can borrow money and there's other sources of revenue the town can get, grants, donations, things like that. Categories of expenses. So we have operating expenses, capital expenses, and really non-capital expenses. And those are under our local control. Those are voted at town meetings. And approved by residents, approved or not approved by residents, but um, state and county charges, prior year deficits. If the town were to operate in a deficit one fiscal year, the state would require it to be made up on the tax recap sheet for the following year. Um, and then we always uh, raise a certain amount of money for abatements and exemptions that can be issued by the assessors. Um, so, revenue. Uh, like I mentioned, local tax levy, uh, so we tax real and personal property, and this is the largest source of revenue for the town. The town also receives state aid, all sorts of different categories of state aid, Chapter 70, education aid, it receives school choice receiving tuition, something called UGA, which is unrestricted general government aid, uh, 
all sorts of, of different types of aid. Local receipts are additional funds received by the town. Again, there's a number of different categories here. The largest one being motor vehicle excise tax. And the very newest one will be cannabis excise tax, which the town will now receive uh, 3% of the gross sales of the one, well, there's one shop operating now. There we go. Um, but okay. I can't hear them. No, no, you want you want to be muted. Oh, oh. Can you hear us, Paul? Let me just make sure that our microphone's on. Yeah. All right. We'll keep going. Yeah. Um. Uh, local receipts. Uh, so like I was saying, cannabis excise tax, we don't have an idea. So the the shop opened in October. October, we was running October time frame. Yeah. We'll see a full cycle of their earnings, what the what the excise tax is in April, just the lag in the collection um, yeah. between the states. So we should get a sense as to what that would be in April. Yeah. Brian, are there any restrictions on the money gets spent or does no. it matter? No, for, for the cannabis excise tax, there's no restrictions. For the community impact fee, which is a separate uh, impact fee, it's heavily restricted and is even more heavily restricted now that they pass uh, reforms to the cannabis law. Mm -hmm. well. Did they lower that amount? They didn't lower it. Uh, they put in a pretty onerous administrative process for the towns to try to collect them. Oh. It's essential that the, the towns essentially have to invoice the uh, company for services provided. Yeah, it's not uh, initially a lot of towns just collected a three percent fee. Yeah, and they really spent it however they wanted. Mm -hmm. Some of those some of those towns are in court right now. Actually, it's not really worth a while to go after it, is it? In my opinion, so in my opinion, no. I, in, in a couple of years, once this process has been sort of hammered out, in the, so the CCC now has, Cannabis Control Commission now has the right to, uh, they essentially have to approve any impact fee payments to communities. And right now there's no guidance or there's no guidance as to how they're gonna decide that. Yeah. Uh, after a couple of years when communities have, you know, communities have gone through it and receive payments, then I think the town could analyze it and see if it makes sense. But yeah. right now we only got one outlet, so to speak, one store. And yeah. So I'm failing to ask for that money now, I want that money now. It doesn't hinder our if we want to ask for it a couple of years from now. Um we need to ask for it on a yearly basis. Okay. Uh, so if we don't do it this year, we could still do it next year. Um I did that before. It's not like you don't have to sign up to do it now and then you do it or lose it or anything. It's not a case, right? But we could, uh, the town couldn't go. So it needs, it, sh it should be every, should be every 12 months from the date of their, we can't, can't go the back. They start not we it. can't get back. Yet. Right. But if we don't do it for this year, next year, if there's oh, more one activity, of them to, to, we still need well, to I can pin Brian. For that, for that year. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes. And then um, all other funds. Um, so this is not really revenue outside of the town. This is transfers from stabilization accounts and free cash accounts, but mm -hmm. it shows up as revenue on the town's books according to the accounting rules. Um, so that's the money we took from free cash last year, the stabilization, vehicle stabilization, building stable, whatever we took it from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is anticipated revenue by source. So this is FY24. So the majority, 74% of the town's revenue comes through the tax levy. State aid is 12%, local receipts are 7%, and then all other uh, 7%. So <clears throat> still heavily dependent on the tax levy like most communities are, because the state doesn't do its fair share. But um, so in terms of 
how the tax levy is calculated in the tax rate. Um, it's pretty simple. So we take our total our total estimated expenses. So that's taking into account the operating budget, uh, state charges, all those items that we saw on that first slide. And I'm going to call Paul. That is number. Oh, he just gave it to me. Right there. Hello, sir. Yeah, maybe. I'll take a break for a second. Yep. Yeah. Take a break. Damn. Break down and buy a real computer. This wouldn't happen. Are we muted? I don't Better so. mute us. Can anybody hear me? Oh, good. Hi, Brian. I can't get audio for the Zoom. I've got, I've got, I've got them right here. Oh, I've got video, but no audio. Oh, okay. And I can hear you if you hold the phone there. But I can't, I can't hear you if you don't hold the phone there. I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, speakers are on. Uh, let's see. You. Okay. Uh, yeah, same as system, MacBook Pro. That's what I'm using, but I should check a different one. How about MacBook Pro, this other one? I still can't hear you. Let me... Oh, <laughs> no wonder. No, I can't hear you from the... Let, I'm going to test... Let's see, same as system. Select microphone. Will you? Can you hear me without the phone? Can you hear me like this? Okay, so my speaker's okay. It's just I can't pick up your audio. Okay, I pressed something up. Speaker phone's okay. That's what I'm going to do. I got you on speaker. I don't know. I can hear you because you're using the phone, but I don't know if I can hear. I don't hear much else. I'm going to use my phone and I'm going to do it. Okay. Can you hear us, Paul? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Uh -oh. You can't hear us. No. Okay. Um, hey, Paul. Yeah. Um, do you have a copy of the agenda? Because you can call in and get audio probably for your phone. I do. Oh, okay. I do have a copy right here. Yeah. You call the one eight hundred number. The eight 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 number. Uh, I'm sorry, eight 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 number. Yeah. Okay. And then you can keep your computer video on and you can get audio through your, through your phone. All right, let me do that. I'm doing it uh, right now. All right, so I'll hang up. Oh, we have a bear in the, in the property right now. Get him on. Oh, I've got to enter the meeting ID. Okay, hold on. Okay. Well, anyway, so I'm
I'm, I'm, I'm in the I'm waiting, in the waiting room, room, now. room now. Anybody can you hear us now? It was dead. But if she said, I can hear you from my, yeah. Yeah. This thing must have been running like crazy. Right, I'm going to hang up so myself so I'm sitting here. It fell right between these two large rock. Can you, can you hear us? Yeah, I hear yeah, a I busy hear a signal. signal. I think we I got think cut we are... off. Yeah, I think we're good, right? We're good. I just now. hear a busy You're... signal. You good? How come mute is on? Just said he got a, has a busy signal. <laughs> they they run faster than you anytime I run. I've never been. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had an encounter with a woman. I've never seen a bear in the woods. I've seen them in, you know, a raft, but not going through the woods. It's more than a scalabator. It's not even close to the bear. Do you see a bear? I'm sure you see one that bear. Oh my God, what a mess this is. <laughs> well, what if we what if we move forward, move yeah, forward right? and, yeah. and then have um and if he has a question he can call yeah. all right let's move forward what about that well, it's not letting me get out of it god Ricky's battle just mute him we'll yeah. keep going yeah <laughs> this isn't going to get resolved anytime soon um, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got to move. Um, Hopefully, you can call back in. Yeah. Because that seemed to work that first time. Right. Um, tax levy. So we take our total expenses and we minus all the total non property tax revenue. So that's local receipts, that's state aid. That's any other type of revenue that we know we have. Um, and that gives us the difference is the amount that we need to raise through local taxation. To get the tax rate, we take the tax levy and divide it by the total assessed value in the town. Total assessed value is certified by the assessors each fall of that same fiscal year that we are in. So currently for FY24, the tax rate is $1,369 per $1,000 in assessed value. And that is down from fourteen twenty for one thousand in assessed value, but I will put it right that is. Value. Yeah, yeah assessed value is one of the five. Hey, can you take that that screen off so he can see where we are? Oh, is he coming back? Yeah. Can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. All right. Did I miss anything? Ha ha. Huh. We got you. All right, next, the local tax levy. So this is our local tax levy from 2015 to 2024. Um, this is uh, the percent change. So the tax levy itself, not necessarily the operating budget, but when we're all when it was all said and done, it went up 4.16% in terms of dollars. So proposition two and a half, just do a quick overview of that. Don't make it too quick, no. All right. So Prop 2.5, this is probably one of the most misunderstood parts of municipal finance. Um, Prop 2.5 limits the amount of new tax dollars that a city or town can raise from year to year. Um, it's not necessarily that you that you can't raise your budget by more than 2.5%. It's not that you can't raise your taxes by 2.5%. It has to do with, with total amounts, and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so there's something called a levy ceiling and there's something called a levy limit, right? And this is a pretty good graphic that I stole from the state. So the levy ceiling is an amount for the tax levy that can never be exceeded. It's a hard cap. Um, 
if a town reaches their levy ceiling or, or city, which some have um, in the past 10 years, they have to cut services. They have to cut expenses. They, they can't go above that. They can't tax above that. The levy limit is the maximum amount the levy can be in a given year. In each year, the levy limit increases by two and a half percent of the prior year. And this is this is the this is the FY24 limit. Right. So the 23 levy limit was $5.8 million. So when we calculate the FY24 levy limit, we can add two and a half percent of this amount, and we can add something called new growth, certified new growth. And new growth is um, it's an amount attributed to new development, new building. It, it is not, <clears throat> what it excludes is just, let's say the assessors want uh, agree that colonial should be raised 10%, right? That's not new growth. New growth has to be new, new buildings, new development, things like that. Um, so we add the, we add these two amounts together. And we add that to the prior years. And that's where a levy limit is. That's where a levy limit is set at. But you have to um, that's not a number that you have to hit. Oh no. Correct. It is it is a we'll call it a soft cap. If right. you want to if you want to spend over your levy limit, you either need to do it through an override, <clears throat> which is town meeting vote and then a ballot vote, or you need to do a debt exclusion. So the difference being a debt exclusion would be for capital projects that you incur debt for. And the other big difference between a debt exclusion and an override is that an override is permanent. An override permanently increases, or you could actually do an underride if you wanted to, but not many towns do that because yeah. you could decrease it. Um, uh, overrides are permanent becomes a permanent part of the debt exclusion increase, the increase attributed to the debt exclusion um, comes off once the so debt is paid. Debt. If we borrow money for 20 years for a debt exclusion, all right, 20 years, it goes away. Yep. <clears throat> so that's how Prop 2.5 works. Um, the difference between our tax levy, I'll get the next slide. Um, I just about that. The difference between the town's actual tax levy, which we talked about here, which is the four point eight nine million, and the uh, six, uh, we'll call it six million. The difference between your levy limit and your actual tax levy is something called your excess levy capacity. That's an amount that you could raise through taxation without the need for an override. Which we do not do, which we do not do. Which so there's no need. There's no need to do that. To be in opposition. Um, it, just quickly, I wanted to touch on certified new growth because this is the one part that concerns me yeah. when I look into the when we look into the future and going forward here. Push the ball. So certified new growth. This is the town since 2016. In 2016 to let's just say 2020, or even 2021. There was development going on in town. A lot of it was residential development, but there was development. And before that, there was there was development in town. But recently, a lot of those opportunities for additional growth and development have either already been taken, or there's just no new ones being created. So <clears throat> what you're seeing is a certified new growth shrinking. Um, that's part of the reasons why the why we wanted to start looking around the exit 35 area and do that economic development study to try to try to identify opportunities for for new growth for development to happen because if you remember this is this is what keeps your two and a half limit increasing um, you yeah. know that new growth is added each year so as that gets smaller uh, your access levy capacity is likely to shrink if, depending on how much your tax levy goes up. Uh, I talked about override and debt exclusions. 
capital capital outlay expenditure is also something similar to to that exclusion. Those are just two mechanisms where you, how you can go over your levy ceiling. How the town this town can spend more than the six million levy ceiling. Um, so I mentioned excess levy capacity. So this is the town's excess levy capacity in 2024. It's, you know, 1.16 million. So that additional amount could be raised in taxation without a ballot vote, essentially. Um, and this chart here is showing our excess levy capacity and it's showing the purple line is the increase in total assessed value. <clears throat> so what's been happening um, is that, you know, total assessed value has been going up you know, since 2020, 2021, it's gone up significantly. It's gone up quick, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what's been happening in terms of our excess levy capacity is it's sort of leveled off, right? It leveled off at, it, it peaked at about 1.2 million. Yeah. And then it started to go down a little bit. And last year, I think it went down by, well, for FY24, it went down by about four to $5,000. So why is it, it's, why is it doing that? It's doing that because the tax levy is increasing faster than the levy ceilings increase because that certified new growth is shrinking down. Um, and expenses are and expenses have increased faster, right? At, at a faster rate the past couple of years. So it's just something I always look at that as a target to see, you know, the town's overall spending. If if we're if that excess levy capacity is shrinking, then it means at least in terms of proposition two and a half, the, the town is our spending is increasing more than the prop two and a half increase would allow. Which if you if you carry that forward, eventually it would lead you to an override vote. Yeah. Um so that's just something something to keep in mind. All in all, compared to our neighbors, the weight is in a very, very healthy position. Um that I call this prop two and a half hell when you're right up against the cap, when you're right up against, I should say not the cap, but you're right up against your levy ceiling here. Um, really, once you're right up against your levy ceiling, the only increase, the amount of increase that you can handle is the two and a half percent of the prior years plus your certified new growth. And if your certified new growth is low, then you're really looking at, you can only, you know, in terms of prop two and a half, you can only increase your spending, your, your tax levy by two and a half percent, whatever that amount is of last year's, um, unless you go for an override vote. So, um, or reduce yeah, expenses. Yeah. Yep. So, the town, so wait, we've done, done a pretty good job of, of, of maintaining its exit. Excess levy capacity, um, and I can't see the colors here, but I think this is. I, I feel like Sunderland just went for an override vote last year, the year before, yeah, and they're already up against, do. up against it again. So I think Deerfield has to do that this year. Yeah, yeah. If they want to, I, I would suspect that they would because. But in some ways, this is a double-edged sword because then the state looks at this and says, we don't need as much state aid because we're not spending all the money we are. We're not taxing to our limit. So why should the state give us, a, you know, I'm... Yeah. Well, I, I think the way state aid is, is absolutely ridiculous. But uh, I mean, if I was a, in the state office, I'd look at this and say, well, you know, Waitley's in pretty good shape. Why are we giving them money? Well, it has to be part of the formula. I don't, I don't think it stands alone. No. And they view this as, you know, ability to pay. But you know, Don, well, that complicated formula right. for state aid, this is a piece of it. Yeah. And but the other when you say double edged sword, there are individuals who would look at this and say, Well, we can go for more. Oh God, yeah. We can go for more. We can do more. Yeah, we can we, spend we, it all. We can provide more. Oh yeah. We can pay more. No. So um we're in the position we're in because yeah. we've been 
frugal, frugal and responsible with yeah. our money, yeah. or the town's money. Yeah, and I think also what's contributed to it is, is the certified new growth, right? Yep. The opportunities that were created for the building in, in Pine Plains, buildings in Pine Plains Estates, yep. um, Dickinson Hill Road, whether, you know, I'm not passing judgment whether that's right or wrong. It, it was certified, it, it led to additional certified new growth, right? And if the town doesn't look forward to where that new growth is going to come from, it's going to stay low. Yeah. And what's going to happen, as, as we all know, expenses expenses go up incrementally. And if if we don't attract or pull in, I'll just say additional taxpayers, mm -hmm. then the burden, you know, the burden on the, the taxpayers, the existing taxpayers increases. Yep. Yeah. Um, and from what I can tell, you know, the town should be encouraging appropriate, you know, it can be done through through, through the planning board and, and amendments to the zoning bylaw, but you know, appropriate new growth is important for the town to maintain a favorable mm -hmm. financial position. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think everybody would. Um, the um, the problem with that is that um, it's a free market system, and the government can't drive building. Right. It can help it, but it can't drive it. It can set the so if, if we if you know you 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 need an atmosphere where um, things are affordable, land's affordable, building is affordable. And if those things aren't there, it's not a whole lot you can do about that. Yeah, I think towns will towns can do a lot to set conditions for development. Yeah, we'll look at the plan more. Yeah. You know, yep. they can zone uh, properties correct, uh, not correct, but they can zone properties or not zone properties for certain uses, and they can provide any utilities to the to, to the property that have like water. Yep. And then it doesn't have sewer. That's a brand for a different thing. Mm -hmm. But um, at least water. Um. Anyway, so I'll get off my soapbox. Okay. Brian, what percentage of taxes are collected? Can't be one hundred percent. It's not one hundred percent. Um, I want to say the past couple of years, I I think have been pretty good. I think it's been upwards of ninety percent that year. Ten percent, like a lot. Yeah, and then you know, there's every leads are filed, and then they're they're chased afterwards. We're collecting all the excise taxes, all the fees, all that stuff. Right? What's that? Excise taxes that we're paying. Um, I'd have to look at the exact numbers, but. That that's one that has a little bit stronger of an enforcement mechanism. Yeah. So yeah, most people pay. Okay. Um, and do we have a reval coming next year? Yeah. Every five years. Uh, it's every five years now. I'd have to go back. It, it's either next year, or the year after. That's a good point because I've heard from more than one economist that there's going to be at least a soft landing, if not a hard landing, of both commercial and residential real estate. Mm -hmm. If that happens and there's a revalue, that could impact our tax revenue. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it'll it could impact how the how the the, the tax burden is spread out. Because yeah. really, the, there's going to be a tax le There's going to be a hard tax levy number that's going to be set based on the expenses. You know the revenue. And then that tax levy is distributed amongst the total assessed value, whatever that number is. So, okay. So this is this is tax rate history in Waitley. Um, you've all heard that my opinion: tax rate is not a good indicator of affordability, and it's not a good indicator of tax burden on residents. Um, <clears throat> But I'll get to what I think in a second. So the tax rates of surrounding communities, Waitley is, you know, mm -hmm. pretty. It, it's lower than a lot of the surrounding communities. My my uh, my addition about Deerfield is you add about two dollars to whatever their tax rate is because they have private districts that provide services, fire and fire water. water. Yeah. So Deerfield's effective tax rate is closer to the fifteen eighty five. So wait, we tax rate 
is pretty low compared to, to surrounding communities. Average single family tax bill, I think, is a better indicator of, of affordability and a tax burden on residents because this is in real dollars as to how much somebody would pay if they own, you know, what the state calculates as an average single family house. So um, each year, I think this, you know, it's going up around 200 something dollars and it's a change. You know, from FY23 to FY24, mm -hmm. and again from 22 to 23, that that seems to correlate, correlate because we know that the budgets were higher that year, and we, we saw that the tax levy, the tax levy was up about nine percent. Um, so that's a, a better indicator as to as to the, the tax burden on residents. Well, like Williamsburg and Conway are. Higher because they have no like zero industry, or you know that that kind of stands out to me that Williamsburg and Conway are pretty high for the you know, just down. to keep like the average tax bill. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's good. it's good to be the value of the homes too. Williamsburg has quite a few businesses. There's a lot. I'm like that right now. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking more along a lot. Like we have Yankee Candle. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like Williamsburg wouldn't have anything like that. And they, I don't know if they have a single tax rate. I assume they do. Most towns do. Yeah. 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 So those businesses are getting taxed right. at the same rate. But where the flag looks the way it does. Yeah. <laughs> and some of this has to do with the. You know, the, the average value of the average single family home in these towns is different, but they're not that far off from each other. No. So we'll get away from uh, taxes for a second. This is state aid, totals for state aid. Um, it's up and down without really much rhyme or reason. Uh, well, 21 and 22, there was a big concern about state uh, you know, state revenue the COVID. During, during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, 23 and 24, state aid's been up. This fiscal year in, in, in 24, um, the, the state has implemented, the governor has implemented what are called 9C cuts. So that's reductions in state spending that are directly under the the governor's authority mm -hmm. and that's because the state is not hitting its uh benchmarks for tax collection i saw that today oh. in january and i think even december mm -hmm. so i don't know what state aid you know it's difficult to to say but at least for in the immediate you know, the immediate couple months it, it it has not been good um One component of state aid is what's called unrestricted general government aid, or AGA. Um, it's, it's unrestricted money that the town can use. It's a tiny amount compared to the town's budget. It, I think expenditures in 23 were probably around 6 million. Um, this is what, 2%, 2.5% of the budget. So it's not, it's not, a, big, it's not a big amount. Yeah, but it's hey, Brian, something. Brian, Brian, yeah. Brian, did you did you, did you say did these you say numbers these are numbers are adjusted, adjusted for, inflation for inflation or not? Or not? Which ones? The numbers, the numbers that are, that are ten, ten, that include ten include ten years, ten years. like unrestricted, like unrestricted government, government aid. aid. Um, those are the amounts for that year. Okay. If that's what you're wanting to look. So in 2015. It was one nineteen four seventeen in those dollars. Okay, okay. so they're not so they're adjusted not for, inflation. for inflation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. School yeah. choice tuition. Uh, so school choice receiving and sending because the town can do both because we can accept students and send students out. Can we skip the slide? Maybe. Say Dave. Chapter 70 yeah. Oh, yep, chapter 78. Uh, it's been pretty constant. Um, there, there has been an emphasis to uh, 
increase aid to rural schools. And that's what we're seeing in 2024. So that's where that, that increase is coming from. A lot of work was done by Senator Comerford and uh, Natalie Blay. And there was a rural policy commission that was uh, some of the planning agencies in Western Mass. And there was a really big push to, to help rural schools. Because quite honestly, when we when they increase Chapter 70, aid is usually on a, on a, a per student basis. So you know, we have how many students at Waitley Elementary, 100 and something. So, you know, $10, $10 a student. That's something, but it, <laughs> not you know, much. When you, if you have, that's what it is, something. Um, so, I mean, this is a step in the right direction. As you can see, it's, it's our schools are way underfunded. Well, you've seen a little bit of that. Our schools are way but, underfunded. But you get, you know, a group of Ill illegals coming across the border and, and we, we can dip into the pockets. <laughs> I hope they <laughs> heard that. So school so school choice receiving and sending. This is always um it, it well there's always a debate about whether it's good or not. But for Waitley school choice has been financially a positive in terms of the amount of money taken in versus the amount of money sent out. And um, so, but overall there's a trend for Waitley Elementary. So this is just Waitley Elementary School. For school choice money coming in, school choice receiving funds could be decreasing. Um, it was around, you know, in 2015, it was over 300,000. And it, it hovered around 250,000 through 2020. And, it, you know, now it's dipped below. Um, well, it dipped below 200 for a little while there. And it's back up a little bit. So this school choice monies are monies, monies that the, the school can use for any purpose, really. It's unrestricted in terms of how it's spent. So school will tell you that they're that they're concerned about shrinking school choice uh, monies and to some extent I, I think they're right um, so school choice the, so the argument goes that school choice is, is is a positive when it's used to fill as a classroom seat when it's used to defray expenses that you're already going to incur anyways mm -hmm. you get five thousand dollars which that money needs that that amount of money needs to be adjusted for inflation, anyways, because it's been five thousand dollars forever. Yeah. Um. So it makes sense if to me it makes sense if if you have an extra seat in the classroom, there's very few expenses that you're going to occur on top of that. Um. You get the money, and that it, 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 it I think it becomes troublesome where if you're if you're bringing in the number of school choice students where you have to incur additional expenses beyond what you're going to take in, then right. then the town is paying. Yep. You know, the town ends up paying for that. Who decides um, the limits of how many school choice kids do we have? It's a school committee vote. I think the school committee votes each. Uh, the school committee votes each year whether to allow school choice and with how many spots are going to be. Yep. So. Waitley Elementary School has one classroom per grade. Um, when we look at town demographics and we look at class sizes coming in, I believe, I don't know if it's this year's kindergarten class is, is quite large. Um, yeah. I think it was this year's. Um, so school choice spots are limited. Are limited. So that revenue, you know, that the school choice receiving funds should go down. Right. Um, and then the burden of educating the uh, there's not that extra funding that comes. Um, so the budget will reflect that. Sure. Yes, yeah, which choice you would expect it to be. You expect it to be less. It's going to start going down. Assuming there's a fixed number of right. seats in the classroom, yeah. which I, I don't know how the school committee looks at that. There's going to be there's some limit. Um, Anyways, charter school. So this is uh, another cost that is thrust upon the town is that students have a right to go to a charter school and the town is required to pay for that tuition. Right. Um, the charter, the town receives 
a small amount in reimbursement for that, and it, it never covers the, the the full amount that that the town pays out. So the town pays out for residents, resident students to go to charter school. Yeah. This does not include vocational school. Correct. Okay. And how much per student? Um, it's tuition based. Charter okay. school is tuition based. Okay. Yep. Okay. And the state just takes those monies and distributes them. The towns or the school, if they would hold from our cherry sheet, right? Yep. It's on the it's yeah. It's a deduction on the cherry sheet. Um, actual local receipts. So this is money that the town takes in, not tax revenue. Um, so actual local receipts, you look over this time period, it's, it's increased somewhat, it's fluctuates, went up and down a little bit, depending on what's, what's going on. Honestly, a lot of it has to depend on motor vehicle excise tax, because that's the largest amount that the town collected. Um, and so in FY23, it was 62%. Of local, our local receipts with local motor vehicle excise tax. Thanks, Jim. It's, it's a huge amount. So, bring your trucks and trailers and everything. Yeah. Uh, what about like uh, restaurant tax? So that comes under other excise tax. That has okay. that has bounced back since the pandemic. Obviously, people are going out now. I think it's around twenty. I think it was around twenty five thousand. Okay. I just didn't see it there. Yep. That's... yep. And again, that's where we would see cannabis excise tax come in also. Solid waste is uh, bags. Yep, that's transfer station bag fees. Um, obviously, the town has it, the, they haven't seen to implement a sticker program. So it's <laughs> it's, it's bag, bag yeah. fees. Um, so, motor vehicle excise tax is, is the biggest one. So when people buy new cars, we all know you pay more, and as your car gets older, you pay less. Right. Up to a point. To a point. Then you <laughs> then you pay the same amount. Same amount for the rest of your for the rest of your life. Yeah, I agree. And then all other that's those are really inter account transfers. Kind of boring. Um, so that that's discussion about revenue. What about expenses? Education is fifty six percent of our budget. This is an FY twenty three because we're not we're not fully through FY twenty four now. Um, education is fifty six percent of our budget, followed by fixed costs. So those are retirement, um, health insurance, things like that. General government is eleven percent. Public works is nine percent. Police is four percent. Fire is one percent. And other public safety is is scams. Total expenditures. Again, you'll see an increase in total expenditures over this time period. We're almost at uh, six million in 2023. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure we'll exceed six million in 2024. Okay. Education expenditures. So this is obviously it's increasing. Uh, it went from 22 to 23, it went up 9.21 percent. Wow. Mm. And this this includes the three, the front uh, frontier, waiting in tech. In tech. Okay. And this was just this was my point about uh, education aid. This is this is total education expenditures. This top line here, and this is total Chapter seventy eight that that the town receives, and all this in here is town money that pays for this. Yeah, the the state pays a tiny wow. fraction of educating children. <clears throat> and as you can see, the oh, it's a little bit difficult to see. But this yellow line is rising faster than this red line. <laughs> that means that uh, this part that the town, the burden on the town, is only increasing every year because the state doesn't see fit to increase uh, education. Mm -hmm. Fixed cost expenditures again, this is retirement, this is health insurance, this is benefits. Um, 
you know, there is, it is going up. I mean, well, we see it every year, retirement goes up, health insurance costs go up. Um, so this isn't really a surprise here. General fund debt service, of the town is in good shape. It has no long-term debt um, moving forward. Really so uh, there are two, so there's two lease purchase agreements right now that, that Chipper the state doesn't base. consider that as traditional debt, so it doesn't show up here. But it's the for the chipper and the excavator. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. trying to eat. We're getting get to the end of those, though. This should be done. I think it's done in twenty five. Yeah, um, those were five years these purchase agreements. Certified free cash. Um, stayed fairly consistent. You know, just around six hundred thousand dollars. What is it for twenty five uh, last couple of years? Uh, so the twenty twenty four is is for is the six eleven seventy four. Right. So free cash is certified free cash is anything left over from the prior years essentially. That's a good number. That's a good number. But... Uh, so almost at the end. All right. Um, takeaways. Um, so each year we uh, we spend free cash to reduce the tax levy. Last year it was two twenty five to reduce that tax levy. So what that means is that if we took away that free cash, if we took away that free cash, our tax levy would be that much higher, right? Mm -hmm. Because we need to generate that money. We're taking two hundred twenty five thousand of the of the expenses, and we're paying it with something other than tax levy. So what? if that free cash amount were to decrease or, or we couldn't put that free cash towards the tax levy, then our tax levy then our tax levy will be higher. Right. And our tax rate would be higher. Wait, what is it like that's about two bucks or is it a dollar a hundred thousand or um it's somewhere in that vicinity I believe. I would think so. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So if we don't use free cash, if we didn't use free cash, the rate would be roughly two dollars more. Yeah, Williamsburg. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But the but the the argument that I've heard that the past years is that it's it's excess. Well, part of it is I part of it is excess taxation that hasn't been spent, right? And then part of it is yeah, you know, other collections from previous years and other. It's a mixed match of things. You know, not to, to muddy the waters, but historically we have underestimated new growth numbers, which would in in turn drives up our free cash. Right. It, it, the town has con estimates actual uh, local receipts conservatively. Right. Yeah. Right. And, it's in it's it's a forced bank account in some ways. It's yeah. I mean, we've been doing it this way for thirty five years. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we just wanted to just make we keep that in the back of our minds. Yeah. yeah. Um, new revenue possibilities. I talked about the that one shop opening, retail shop opening. Um, first full quarter. When we'll see that, when we'll see that, should be able the first full quarter of, of excise tax. We had a small; it was like for half a month that they were open. Got a couple thousand dollars. Or something. I mean, we're, we're still not talking about a tremendous amount of money. Yeah, so it's three percent of the gross sales. So uh, if they do two million, then we get sixty thousand. <laughs> so. I don't. I have no idea what. What year? I see a lot of cars there. Yeah, it's all these cars there. I see a lot of clothes made around there. A lot of companies. Yeah. Yeah. Common life lives and over saturation. Yeah, for sure. Location, location, location. You got it. We'll see. Now, what's going on with that other side of that? The gray building. It still has. It still has. It's still permitted for a for retail shop. Do they still want to do it? As far as I know. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think the state has, they don't have their final license to open, 
whether that's the state dragging their feet or the business not pushing forward, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but if they do, that would be another another source of revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, ARPA money. So ARPA money needs to be obligated by December of 2024. So there's one hundred thirty-two thousand eight hundred forty-one dollars left of unobligated ARPA money. So obligated means it needs obligated does not mean spent. It means that it's either spent or there's a well or there needs to be a contract for services or goods in place. So it can't just be the select board saying we're gonna we're gonna buy a new truck with this money. Yeah. There needs to be a signed contract. There needs to be a signed agreement in place to purchase the vehicle. Yeah. What are the restrictions on it? Nothing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Any lawful any lawful municipal purpose. Yeah. Any lawful municipal purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. To buy a tiny piece of the bridge for that amount of money. What did you turn? Um, and I, I talked about my concerns about future growth. I think that's an important part. It, it really impacts the town finances, but it's not directly under the finance committee's control. Okay. So there's, you know, there's got to be this communication about, hey, this is important. You know, this is important yeah. stuff that that happens because it directly impacts, you know, the town's finances. Um, and this is, uh, these are the amounts in the various accounts. That's a nice picture. Yeah. Um, um, vehicles could be a little more, but, you know. Yes, I'm, I'm still waiting to see the, the two new vehicles that we appropriated money for that haven't shown up yet. The F-515 Cruiser. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I have not seen them. That, yeah. I mean, I think there was a UAW strike for a while that delayed it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure. The, well, the there was... Strike. I, there was some discussion about that the uh, police cruiser, by the time we appropriated the money and he ordered it, he couldn't get a 2023. He had to get it, he had to wait until the 24s came out. Right. And now the 24s are out and I still haven't seen it. Yeah. I don't know what the, is going on with the truck. I never heard anything about that. They got mine every six weeks. Well, you know, we have to have special stuff, you know. Yeah. So that's my spiel. Overall, yeah. overall, I, overall, we're this year in good shape. In, in good shape, I think. My long term worry is is related to increasing expenses and, and shrinking new growth, certified new growth. Yeah. You know, just just reassessing what we have now at a higher value is yeah. doesn't doesn't <clears throat> doesn't relieve the burden. Off of the existing taxpayers, right? Um, so, are there, are there any other than those? Are there any storm clouds? Are there any thing coming to um, put pressure on the budget or put pressure on well, new highway uh, process? Yeah, well, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about capital stuff. That uh, yeah. because the the capital improvement plan for these actually done for the year. They looked at their projects and they, they prioritized them. Um, it, large ticket items. There's the uh, air packs for the fire department. That's uh, somewhere in the in the the, the ballpark of two hundred thousand dollars. There is the um, the project at the elementary school related to the. And we've seen this request the past couple of years for the mini splits. Mm -hmm. They learned that. As they phased them in, the electrical system could not support all of them. So there's an additional fifty to fifty-five thousand dollar request for electrical upgrades to support the installation of the remaining mini splits. So the remaining mini splits being around one hundred and ten thousand. So at the end of the day, you're looking at one hundred sixty thousand, roughly, for that project. Um, right, I know we talked about this, but what about getting the controls fixed in that building with the existing heating system that's in there? Um, there's a lot of there's cold rooms. Look, in the elementary school, you have one room that's 95 degrees, and that one right next to it's 55 degrees. I'm exaggerating, but there's a management system in, in there to make the controls work, so all the rooms get right temperatures, and that, that equipment's not working. 
if they could fix that, that would solve a lot of the problems. I, 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 I haven't seen any proposals to. I, I know there's a look, there's some climate to but I didn't know it was. It's a lot. You might have heard from, from the facilities director about that. Um, and this is, you know, this is what our job comes down to. Because, as we've talked about in the past, we have a request system. Um, in business, you have an allocation system where this is the amount of money we have to use for raises, infrastructure, all that kind of stuff. Here, each department requests what they feel they should. So it's a request. Okay. Is it based on affordability? No. No. So the affordability aspect lies with us. Is this, does this make sense? And, you know, it, this is a very simplistic look, but, you know, the, the, what I'm hearing is if, if you had a town with <clears throat> 10 houses in it and costs keep going up, all of a sudden they say, well, I'm sorry, but what we have, instead of 10 houses, we need to have 50 houses in the same geographical area in order to split the costs, the escalating costs that are being incurred year after year after year. And, and the 10 people that were originally in the town were saying, how did this happen? Well, it happened because they didn't have a good finance department. Finance committee, people who questioned as to why we need X, Y, and Z, and people who drew a line in the sand as to what could be what they would recommend for approval to the town. So that's what that's our job. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. What else is on the capital plan? Uh, leftover from last year is the, um, I'm sure we'll kindle the, uh, discussion about the replacing the F-150. Um, I think, yeah, I think there's a cruiser, right? Is there a cruiser? Should cruiser. Be a cruiser for replacement. 65 or a cruiser. Uh, okay. Even though we don't have the one we already appropriated two years ago. Yes, this is, the, this is this is the chief's car. So the 2017 Yanmar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, longer term highway garage, obviously. Yeah. Um, they, they started. They, they just started the programming study for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> identify the needs. Uh, identify the space needs, and then there'll be a discussion about how best to meet those space needs. Um, that's not something that's gonna come to town meeting this year. No, my okay. that is right. years out. All right. I would be surprised if it I would I'd be shocked if it was two years. Okay. Yeah. I didn't I don't know what the time frame is. Yeah. Okay. You know, there seemed to be a lot of discussion about it at one time and then it kind of died down and or to me it did. And now it seems to be coming up again. So yeah. longer term there's you know there's uh, there's turnout gear for the fire department. That's a 27. Um, there's whispers about leading expansion at the fire department, possibly. You know, I think one of the one of the trucks yeah. might be on the, the capital plan for replacement long term. It's gonna be that's gonna lead to a discussion about you yeah. know how many what do we need for fire apparatus in the town, and then it could lead to a discussion about the region. Um, you know, what different towns need and, and what can be provided through mutual aid. Um, it's just a larger discussion that's going to happen, but that, I mean, fire trucks are looking at what million now, million dollars, probably. Um, hmm. so there's some bigger ticket items uh, on the horizon. Is there any appetite for mutualizing mm -hmm. fire service like we do with South County EMS? Um, there are no active discussions about that. 
just I because mean, drugs are so expensive to put 50 miles a year out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. But, yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or thoughts or for Brian regarding Has the personnel committee met? No, not to discuss. Well, the personnel yeah. committee is working on revisions to the personnel committee bylaw. <laughs> Oh. Has not met to talk about the school year twenty five okay. items yet. Have they, uh, have they assessed the um, um, the review by the consultant that was? That's what we're going. That's what we're going through. All okay. right. So we're almost. I think we're almost through the first page. Exactly. We're almost through the pop. We just need to start the appendices, right? So as usual, Brian is way too modest. Uh, he has had to do a fair amount of work on what the draft we got from the consultants, which has caused a fair amount of conversation amongst the committee about why that would be. But Brian has, as usual, done a great job and as usual has not seen the film or cues. But yeah, it, the draft we got, just gonna say, it, was, it, it left a few things, a lot of things to be desired. And Brian went through on his own time. Well, not, yes, his own time. I still update, don't worry. All right. Well, anyway, good. Uh, anyway, Brian has done a lot with it because it was not Waitley. It was a right. copy and paste of a uh, bunch of different towns. Oh. I mean, that's that's not even me trying to be mean. That's just quite clear it's, when you read the town of Goshen in your policy. And they're like, well, right. I don't know why we're looking at that. So, right. yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think we're making progress, and it is largely thanks to Brian taking what they did and make it actually match what happens in the town of Waitley, not some a hundred yeah. and something pages that we don't follow. So don't have a policy if you're not gonna follow, just don't have a policy. Right. right. Well thanks, Brian. Well we hope it comes out soon. Yeah. Sooner rather than later. Um so okay. All right. All right. Sir, schedule. Uh, planning schedule. Oh, we got plan. Okay. So but I got to run to the copier because I left these on the copier. Whatever. Oh, the uh, uh, the, the dates? Yeah. Okay. I, Did everybody get the dates? Um, yeah. Is, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, is everybody good? I know I'm that you'll, I'm you'll I'm be sorry. out for the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the way it's structured is that we will have two meetings, just the finance committee. Um, and we'll have the other meetings in conjunction with the select board. And that's important from a couple of, for, for a couple of reasons. First is that it's efficiency so that do, it do, doesn't have to be done twice. The presentations and, of the, what? Presentations from the departments. Right, from, from each of the departments. And then on top of that, you know, the communication between the select board and the finance committee can be enhanced if we're all in the same room. So that's the uh, that's the reason behind that. But we will have two meetings, which just the select with just the finance com committee, and um, and as we have done in previous years. When the departments come in and present, we do, we don't vote on that day. Um, we wait, and in th in this case, I, I think we will probably take votes at those two meetings that we have alone, so we can discuss it. You know what is being requested, and of those requests, um, which we will be recommending. So, um, so that's what that's what. The approach will be again. So, any questions or thoughts about that? Um, so, the one addition to this, yeah, and I, I wanted to check. Did I talk with Darius today? Yeah. Um, so, the next meeting would be Tuesday, February 20th. Right. And then um, he wanted to, like, he and the school committee wanted to come and talk. Um, so we're trying to find a time that last week of February where they could come. So okay. we're hoping Wednesday, February 28th, if folks could do that. Wednesday, 
Wednesday, February 28th. Yeah. Kind of came out dark here. Oh, okay. It's the blue. Right, right, gotcha. Because the, okay. the Frontier budget hearing is March 5th at, at Frontier, and then the Waitley Elementary School budget hearing is on March 6th, the following day. Will we have the budget? Uh, we should have it before the, the meeting on the 28th. Okay. I believe the Frontier budget will come out fairly soon. Okay. So in this case, they would be they would be coming here to talk, and then the fifth would be at Frontier, and then the sixth would be at at the elementary school. If anybody wants to attend. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um. So yeah. So that's a question that I wanted to have is if we wanted Franklin Tech in, um, in a abbreviated presentation. <laughs> Well, well, they they abbreviated it last year. I believe someone said something during the presentation. Oh uh, yeah, the year, the year, year before, before it was uh, forty five minutes. Yeah, forty five minute infomercial. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a great presentation. It is, but um, you know, at the end of the day, when you have how many towns? The 23 towns? Yeah, I was going to guess 20. Yeah. We don't have a lot of control. We have pretty much no control. No. And But um, it's impressive. Um, you know, when they give their full presentation of what their school offers and what they're doing and where they're going. Um, I have a couple kids from there. What? I have a couple kids from there. Yeah. Right in there. Yeah. 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 It's no guarantees, they, but they have one of them. I love the night program where they're educating people of unemployed or underemployed adults into a trade. Yeah. So they're paying my kid to help teach it with a teacher. But all it is is getting them into the carpentry, carpentry room. Right. So my thing is, why are we using tax dollars? Yeah. Carpentry Union should be paid for. Why are they not paying? Because they're taking you know, a bus to go down the field trips for them and and they're getting apprentices right in there. Why are we paying for that dollars? Yeah. Well, maybe we should have them in so that JD can uh and ask them now. Yeah, this is your chance. Grill them. Yeah. Captain Body. It's a good program, really. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just the point of the matter. The point of the matter is that you know, for us to to sit and my gosh, it's an hour free presentation. Yeah. yeah. And what what can you really question? They, you know, I mean, they, they, I heard their shop. They have limited they have equipment there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So we bought it all last year for that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the kind of thing you can't say no. No. So. All right. All right. Make a motion. We adjourn. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul? Aye. Aye.